Hey everyone, Jordan here, back with another Proto Tech Tip. In today's video, I'm going to talk about CNC machine tooling. Our mission is to help meet your deadlines and focus on what's important by manufacturing custom parts and enclosures in two to three days with no minimum order. In order to offer fast custom manufacturing, we need to have the right materials, components, and machinery on hand so we can make what you need quickly and efficiently. Part of that offering is our CNC machine tooling. So for today's Prototech Tip, I want to give you a high level overview of the tooling that we stock and what specifically each type of tooling can achieve. Now a disclaimer right off the hop. This guide to CNC tooling doesn't mean you need to start calling out specific tooling in your designs. In fact, you really shouldn't. That's where our design team comes into play. Our engineering design services team will assess your design and its features and then come up with a manufacturing plan to make that design. By having this overview of tooling, my hope is that you will come away with an understanding of how these types of tools work and the importance of minding our constraints for feature depth and corner radius when designing. So with that, let's get into it. The first type of CNC tooling is the face mill. Full disclosure, while this tool is useful in the milling process, it really is the least important for part design. The face mill is used to rough out a lot of material on the top of a part. Next, we have end mills. Think of end mills as the workhorse of CNC tooling, because this type of tooling can create many different feature types. End mills come in many different shapes and sizes. Some have square bottoms and others are rounded. In this example here, we have a pocket with a flat bottom. An end mill with a square bottom would have been used to create that geometry. A contour, on the other hand, would have been made with a ball nose end mill with a rounded end. The key thing to understand about end mills is that while they are used to create all kinds of different features on your part, the features they can create are limited by the size of the tool itself. Next up, we have edge tools such as chamfer mills and edge rounding cutting tools. These tools are specialty tools used to create edge breaks on parts called chamfers or edge radii. We also have tools that are used to create an, or alter a hole. This would include drills, taps, or reamers. Hole tools, as you probably guessed, make different types of holes in your part. Drills create standard holes, while taps create threaded features. And then we have reamers. Essentially, a reamer can be thought of as a drill that is used to create specifically a tight tolerance hole. An example of where a reamer would be useful is if you need to create a hole for inserting a dowel pin, or if you need a certain slide fit between mating parts. Finally, we also have lathe tooling. CNC turning uses stationary tooling and inserts to create features on the inside or outside of a part. Lathe tooling is a little more abstract than mill tooling, but essentially they can be broken into two main categories. There are turning tools, also referred to as outer diameter tools, or OD tools for short, and there are boring bars, which are also called inner diameter tools, or ID tools for short. For a great rundown on CNC turning, check out the Prototech tip that we've linked below. In the end, when it comes to tooling, the most important thing to keep in mind is that the materials and tooling we use determines our constraints and manufacturing guidelines. We've got these outlined on our website if you're interested in more detail. My best advice? Mind our recommended minimum radius and feature depth values when creating your design. You'll minimize the amount of back and forth you'll be doing with our engineering team. Of course, we're always happy to help, but for times when you are really down to the wire for your deadline, sending us a design that already matches our capabilities and guidelines is going to speed up the process. For more information, watch our Proto Tech Tips about minimum corner radius for CNC machining, and check out our website. Thank you for watching this week's Proto Tech Tip. We'll be back next Tuesday with a new one.